Peace, 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 peace. This your brother Monroe Jr. So if you've been keeping up and I've been keeping up, trying to at least with this story about Jay Prince. Uh, YBN, uh, J. Hocus, uh, my son, all of them uh, have been in communication. Uh, YBNJ was beat up uh, pretty badly. Brother had a three, four hundred stitches to his face. He was jumped. His chains were taken. One of his chains belonged to Rap a Lot. And most of us know about Jay Prince, the CEO, the owner, the business mogul out of Houston and Rap a Lot Records for his service and sacrifice to our people and his being of great service and being a person of great conflict resolution between many public figures amongst our people. So recently as a result of a person whom he said he has vested interest in young YBN rapper J evidently J Prince was angry and upset about it because he went public with it usually this is a man from what I have observed to him that deals behind the scene when it comes to putting out fires amongst our people. So I was very surprised to see him come out and tag people up in New York where YBNJ was assaulted to let him know, to let them know Hey, let's unite. Let's figure out what this is all about. But what threw a lot of or a few of the people he tagged, Hocus and My son, off was that he named the person that did the assault, and Hocus was like, Hey, I don't want to be involved with that, you know, I don't want my name. Mentioned with that, he, they, him and my son basically said, hey, if you would have reached out to us behind the scenes, it would have been all good. They showed their respect to Prince. They showed their love and admiration to Prince. They didn't come off as disrespectful to the brother. As we all, anybody with a sound mind and conscience that's been following Jay Prince, it's hard not to love the brother. All that he has done for our people. You know, we salute and commend that brother, and we thank you, J. Prince, for your service and sacrifice. Now, do I agree with the manner in which he went out publicly? Uh, we're dealing with warfare. We're dealing with tactics. In the book, The Art of War, it says that 
All warfare is deception. So do we think that J. Prince meant harm to any of the people that he named? I don't think so. I, I, I really don't think so. Even though it might have been misunderstood. And, and that's what surprised me because Prince usually works behind the scene. Right? So evidently he wanted to send shots to the person he named in their associates to come out publicly. But in the teachings of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad under the leadership of Minister Farrakhan, we're taught to go to the root of the problem. What is the root of the problem, brothers and sisters? The root of the problem is that our young people don't have a thorough knowledge of themselves. And in the art of war, it says that if we don't know our enemies and you don't know yourself, that you're bound to lose every war or battle. But it says if you know yourself, you might win some battles. You might lose some battles. But if you don't know yourself and your enemies, you're going to lose every battle. And that's why young people are losing battles out here. Because they don't know their self-worth. They don't know that they're God. They don't know that all life originates from their blackness. And all life emanates from black and brown. As even the scholars and the scientists say that black is dominant. Light is recessive. Look up Mr. Leakey. Anthropology. Go to study the origin of men. They go to Africa. Right? They found the bones of a man that they called Zen Anthropos. Millions of years old. All life has to come out of the darkness, the triple darkness of our mother's womb. The most honored Elijah Muhammad said every time you look at a black man, you're looking at God. But we were made to hate our own blackness. And now we are doing to each other what our former slave masters did to us because of the lack of knowledge. So that's the root problem. And once we can remedy or solve that problem, then we can solve a major ailment in our community. In fact, our brother Umar did a good job in this clip explaining the base problem that's going on in black, black society right now. I'm going to go ahead and roll the clip. If we go back to the 1980s, the 1980s, if you remember, there was a lot of focus around whether or not black men had a gene that predisposed them to violence. What's making black men kill other black men? Nobody said anything about slavery, the after effects, self-hate, miseducation, economic castration. Because I can tell you that miseducation and economic castration, that is the lack of jobs, is the mother and father of violence. If you don't educate me properly and you keep me from making a decent livelihood for me and my children, I have no choice but to go to the underworld to feed my family. And in the underworld, I'm likely to come face to face with somebody else who's trying to feed their family at my family's expense. It breeds the violence. And even if you're not selling drugs, the fact that you're walking around knowing as a man that you can provide for you and yours, which is a natural responsibility, it breeds the anger that we sooner or later let off on one another. And whenever you read a story about a black man killing another black man, they never give you the contextual relevance of what happened. You coming out of store, I'm walking in the store. I bump you accidentally, you turn around and you kill me. On the surface, I just like look like a crazy, angry black man. Nobody's gonna tell you I got fired from a job yesterday for standing up to somebody who called me out my name. Nobody's gonna tell you that I've been putting in job applications for two years consistently, and as soon as they find out that I've been to prison, they drop me from the job. They don't put it in context. 
75% of the violence that's taking place out there by black people is economically based. And nobody's dealing with it. Half the black men in Philadelphia, unemployed. Half the black men in Baltimore, unemployed. Half the black men in New York City, unemployed. But you don't want to tie that to the rise in violence? Everybody knows when there's, no, when there's never enough jobs in society, violence goes up. Even amongst white folk. This is what sociologists study. This is the science of criminology. No jobs, violence. More jobs, less violence. You know this. But when it comes to black people, we don't want to put it in context because we are trying to do what? Exterminate the image. We're trying to get people to see black people as an unnecessary hindrance to the progress of humanity. Now, brothers and sisters, Minister Farrakhan teaches us that love is the greatest force in the universe. That's what our young people need more than anything. They don't need us to sit on the sideline and criticize them, but yet you are never found in the street amongst them. We don't feel their pain. We don't feel that most of them have grown up without fathers, without guidance. They've grown up in the household among women. So a lot of them have missed that masculine energy in their life. So they gravitate to the streets for love. They're looking for that masculine expression of a man that has not been in their life. So what's needed in our community is not condemnation. What's needed in our communities is mentorship. Right? There's a, there was a saying by a popular artist, I can't re remember his name, that... Don't condemn the youth for their pants being down. Pull up their minds and their pants will follow. Our youth need knowledge right now. They need resources. They need finances. They need opportunity. More than anything, brothers and sisters, no greater love than the man or the woman that will lay down their life for their brother or sister. Well, we can't say that we love our people if we're not willing to lay down any of our time and devotion in community service to them. Right? It's no, you, it's no uh, value in going to church, going to the mosque, going to the synagogue, reading the scripture, praising Jesus. When Jesus was not in, the, in a building, he was out amongst the people. Huh? And he used to get on the hypocrites whom talked about him being among the publicans and the sinners. And he said, let he who is without sin cast the first stone. So it hurt my heart to see YBNJ laying there, face scarred up, needing over 300 stitches. So let us all, brothers and sisters, take to the streets because that's real. That's where the real work is. I love what my brother Derek and them are doing out of Houston. They're being proactive, out engaging our young black men instead of being reactive. Meaning when something happens, then we want to make motion. No, we have to make motion before something happens. Before things like YBNJ being robbed happens. So... Let us all, brothers and sisters, let peace be our way in our communities. Because as the art of war says, winning a hundred battles is not the height of skill. But to subdue your enemy without having to fight is the height of skill, brothers and sisters. So let us be proactive so that bloodshed is not needed as a remedy or a cure in our communities. This is your brother Monroe Jr. I'm signing off. Peace.